we welcome you all to the North Church of Christ, the wonderful, beautiful North Church of Christ in the heart of Newark, New Jersey. We're here. We're here. We are here this evening for our church growth workshop on this Tuesday night. Uh, we're certainly glad to ha have those who are in the audience with us. And for those who are joining us via YouTube and Facebook, we welcome you as well. Uh, we have been having a marvelous time. Since Sunday, Dr. Lane has been uh, putting it down in reference to what thus saith the Lord. And uh, he's been stepping on a lot of our toes to the extent where, uh, you know, we, we've been hearing and getting a better understanding of what we should be doing in order to help this church grow, uh, in order to develop other, be, become the true disciple and help to make and develop other disciples. Uh, and uh, we are looking forward to hearing him on tonight. Uh, We're certainly uh, appreciative of those who have been consistent, who's been here Sunday, yesterday, and has come out again on tonight. Uh, we only have one more night. Tomorrow night is our last night to uh, receive this information. Uh, fortunately, we are in the modern age of technology where you're able to rewatch it again via YouTube and Facebook and uh, watch it over and over again. And if you had not, you had not, going all the way back to uh, Sunday morning Bible school, go back to Sunday morning Bible school, start there, uh, watch Sunday morning service, and then go into uh, Monday night service and uh, re recapture all of the things and all the information that Dr. Lane has given to us, and you will be blessed. We're going to go into our devotion. We have a, a, one of Newark's. One thing about one thing about Newark, and uh, I guess I can I'm, I'm, I can brag about this, uh, and at the same time rejoice in it, is that we have a an embarrassment of riches. We have an embarrassment of riches when it comes to brothers who can work and, and sisters who are out there who can work and do, I mean, and preachers and so on and so forth. So we have multiple, multiple singing and preachers. And uh, so we're certainly delighted to have that and blessed to have that here at Newark. And one of our uh, riches is this brother right here, <laughs> Brother Cornelius Clark, uh, who has been uh, leading us in songs over the past uh, night. And so uh, he's going to come come to us at this time. He's going to render two song selections, uh, and then I'm going to uh, lay hands on Brother Michael Graves and ask Brother Michael Graves to uh, prepare his mind to uh, go to the throne of grace in prayer, uh, and then we're going to have a, uh, another, no, I'm sorry, then we're going to introduce our preacher after that. Uh, so at this time, Brother Clark. Good evening. We got a base tonight, y'all. We had a base last night. We got a base tonight, too. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Hart. <laughs> woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stay stayed on Jesus. Yes, I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stay stayed on the Lord. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stay, stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're singing and praying, singing and praying with my mind, and it was stay, stayed on Jesus. Yes, we're singing and praying with our minds. And it stayed, stayed on the Lord. You know we're singing and praying with our minds. And it is stayed, stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Walking and talking. We're walking and talking with our minds. And it is stayed, stayed on well, we're walking and talking with the minds stayed on the Lord. You know we're walking and talking with the minds, and it is stayed, stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't hate your neighbor. You can't hate your neighbor with your mind. It needs to be stay, stay. Well, you just can't hate your neighbor with your mind. It's got to be stayed, got to be stayed on the Lord. You know that you can't hate your neighbor with your mind. It needs to be stayed, stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, we're walking and talking with our minds. It needs to be stay, stay to home, my Jesus. Yes, we are walking and we're talking with our minds. It needs to be stay, stay on the Lord. You know that we're walking and talking with our minds. It needs to be stay, stay on Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and we're singing hallelujah, 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 amen. Oh, I want to see him. Oh, I want to see him. As I journey through this land, singing as I go, I will be pointing souls to Calvary, to a crimson flow, where how many arrows pierce my soul from without within, where but my Lord leads me on through him i must wear singing now oh i want to see my lord and just look look upon his face where well, i'm there to sing for ever of his saving grace you know that on the streets of glory let me lift up my voice where hell can i'll be home and is ever singing now oh, oh i want to see him and just look upon his face where hell now there to sing for ever oh you know that on the streets of glory well just let me lift up my voice and in care will be home well it's ever to rejoice well now win in service for my lord dark may be the night but i'll cling more close to cause he will give me life you know that satan snares may vex my soul and may turn my my thoughts aside oh but my lord well he goes on ahead least whatever be tied singing oh i wanna see him i just wanna look upon his face well now there to sing forever oh you know you know you know on the street on the streets of glory well just let me lift up my voice well now cares i'll be whole ever to rejoice. Amen. Amen. All right. Let us pray. Mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day that you have given us today. It was a beautiful day, and we rejoiced in it. And even though there were joy stealers all around us, we still had joy. 
Thank you, O merciful Father, for planting something in each and every one of us that nobody can take. Nobody can take. We thank you for the joy of the day, Father, and we are looking forward to this evening, the night that you have given us for your saints to assemble, yes. to get a word from the Lord that may help us all, individually and collectively, that may help us to do our Christian duties better than we've done them ever before. Well. Thank you, merciful Father, for blessing everybody that's watching tonight, those that are within the sound of my voice in the audience. Bless them in such a way that they all stand in need of because we all standing in the need of prayer. Yes. Each problem may be different from the next, but we all are still crying out, Abba, Father, we need you. Yes. Thank you for the guests that are in the house tonight, Father. Thank you for bringing them here safely. Those that are still en route, we ask you, Lord, to guide their steering wheels and their cars that they may get here unharmed to hear the ungrafted word of the night. Thank you for the preacher man who's come a mighty long way to deliver what you have given him to give to us. Yes. We pray that you'll continue to crown his head with wisdom and knowledge and give him good bodily health and strength. Uh, Father, as uh, we come together tonight, we want to have open hearts and open minds so that we can be like sponges and absorb what is taught to us tonight. Yes. And Father, most of all, Thank you for allowing us to lay our burdens at your feet. Because when we can't bear them, we know you can. You are a serious burden bearer. And so, Father, as we all may have tears on our pillows at night, we know that joy is coming in the morning. Because while we sleep in slumber, you are handling the situations we find ourselves in. And we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We all come to praise the Lord anyway, right? Amen. I love to praise him. Well, I love to praise him. I love to praise him. You know that I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love, I love to praise him. I love to praise him. You know that I love to praise his holy name. Cause he's my rock now He's my rock, my rock, my sword and shield He's just a wheel, oh yes he is In the middle of, don't you know He will never, no, 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 no He won't ever, I know, I know, I know He's a Jew, oh, that I have found and we're singing hallelujah yes no hallelujah you know i love to pray oh you know hallelujah hallelujah yes we love to praise his name you're singing hallelujah hallelujah y'all we love to praise you know that we love we love to praise you know we love we love to praise, we love to praise His holy name Cause He's my rock, He's my rock, my rock, my rock My sword and shield, He's just that wheel Oh, don't you know, don't you know He will never, no, no He won't ever, ever let me down He's just a jewel that I have found. Oh, we're singing hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. You know that I, I love, I love the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, we love to praise. 
Don't you know, hallelujah, Lord. We love to praise you, Lord. It's all for you, Lord. Well, well, you know that I love to. Don't you know that I, I love, I love to praise him. Don't you know in the middle of the day I want to, I want to praise him. Even at night I want to. You ought to want to praise the Lord yourself now. I love to praise his holy name. Thanks, Dre. Yeah, 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 yeah. I told y'all we got an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> embarrassment of riches. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Great job, my brother. Well, but you got to come back up here, though. You got to introduce you know, I know you don't, you, you ain't let it out. You got one more. You got to bring the preacher up, my brother. <laughs> Once again, we are uh, excited to be here. Uh, we have been having a fantastic time in the Lord over the past uh, three days. Three days starting from early Sunday morning up into this, this present moment we have been uh, moved by the Spirit, blessed by the preacher man, enlightened through God's word. Uh, we are on cloud nine as they say, at least I am, uh, in reference to what I have been learning and a combination of being on cloud nine and um, at the same time trying to uh, get myself checked up when it comes to what I need to be doing for soul winning. Uh, and Dr. Lane, going back to Sunday, has been giving us the, the, the medicine and the remedies that's necessary for us to get ourselves together when it comes to soul winning and helping this church to grow. Going back to Sunday morning, he blessed us with the lesson on embracing the covenant of expectation. And if you had not received the, the, the handout, uh, let us know. I believe they're in the foyer. Uh, and if they're not, we're going to make some more copies of that uh, because of the, what we want to know. What's the expect, expectancy of the, the covenant for Newark when it comes to God and when it comes to us uh, upholding his word. And then he went on a Sunday afternoon and he dealt with soul winning, a church growth workshop. And, uh, and the, th uh, the thing that he was dealing with was trading junk for joy. Yeah. Trading junk for joy. And, 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 and <laughs> let me tell you, he showed up and showed out yeah. on Sunday morning uh, during that time. I mean, he, he preached and preached and preached. And, uh, you know, we were, we were talking yesterday and he had people contacting him across the country regarding uh, that, that sermon that he did on um, trading junk for joy. And if you had not seen it, I encourage you to go back because it will bless yourself. It will bless you in reference to reviewing that lesson. And then on last night, last night, the sobs that saved the city, and was talking about that, that teardrop, right? Uh, and and, and the, the salt that is in that teardrop, and uh, he moved me, he moved me to say, T, I gotta do a better job. T, you need to do a brother, better job in reference to having that, that, that tear for those lost souls and having that being moved in compassion to the extent where I go above and beyond uh, and not just going about my day, but just looking and seeking to save souls because there's so many that's out there. And on tonight, uh, he is going to bless us once again. Uh, I cannot thank Dr. Lane enough. I'm sorry, uh, and I'm sure I speak um, on behalf of the, the leadership uh, when I say that he has been a blessing to us as a church. Uh, he has been, as they say, a God sent to this church as a congregation. Uh, you just don't know. You just don't know 
what he is, has done and what he has done unbeknownst to a lot of you that has blessed us and helped us in so many ways. So we, uh, we are thankful for him for what he has done. And uh, so, so, I mean, I want to talk about a humble uh, uh, man, a humble man with all of his, his, his um, knowledge and, and his training and his education and so on and so forth. Such a humble bro uh, brother and we're thankful for him. He's going to come tonight and break apart another, God, another portion of God's word for our blessing in reference to how we should be going out in terms of growing this church and how we should be going out doing our work for the Lord. So I'm going to get out of his way. I'm going to let uh, the song leader, Brother Clark, uh, come before us, and he's going to sing another selection. And the next voice that you will hear will be none other than Dr. David Lane. Y'all know what time it is. Oh, Lord, I've come. I've come to receive, to receive my blessing. I'm patiently waiting and waiting and waiting for the harvest. It's so nigh. I read that in Hebrews 11 and 1. That kind of faith to know that my blessing and it's mine. Oh my, it's harvest time. Sing it again, sing it again. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I've come. I've come to receive, to receive my bless. I'm patiently waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for the harvest. It's so nice. I read that in Hebrews. Eleven and one, that kind of faith to know in my blessing, and it's mine, oh mine, it's harvest time. Well, I'm standing, I believe on your promise, I'm existing on your word, everything that I speak. I believe that you'll give it to me. Now it's the Father's real good pleasure that the kingdom get in line. Well, it's mine, oh mine. It's harvest time. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. I've, I've come to receive. I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for the harvest. It's so nigh. I read that in Hebrews 11 and 1. That kind of faith to know in my blessings. And it's mine. Oh, my. It's, it's harvest time. And it's mine. Oh mine, it's harvest time, last time, and it's mine. Oh mine, it's harvest time, it's harvest time. Amen, amen. Praise his name. Ain't nobody mad up in here but the devil. My Lord, we thank God for the blessing of another day and the opportunity to gather together that we can just say thank you for another day's journey. The Lord has lengthened out the brickly threads of our lives and allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. He's given us another day. As we indicated on Sunday morning, we have 24 hours in every day to get it done. He's not going to give us 42. We only got 24. And it's how we prioritize our time. He gives it to us as a gift. And what we're trying to emphasize during this week is ROI, return on investment. 
is the business term. God gave you a day. Now, what did he get out of it? And if he gives you a week or another month or another year, and at the end of this year, if he had to ask you, now, why should I give you another year? If you're going to spend next year like you spent this year, I, I'm, I'm looking at my return on investment. I've invested in you. Now, what do I get out of it? And so that's why blessing is a part of what we have to be doing at the Newark Church of Christ. I mean, the Newark Church of Christ is where believing, belonging, and what is that other word? Blessing, Blessing is our passion. We, been, we, we got the believing down. We working on that, that, uh, that belonging thing. But it's that blessing that's going to get most of us in trouble. Uh, God blesses you. And I, I hate to tell you, boo, it ain't about you. God blesses you not for you. God only blesses you to be a blessing to somebody else. He blesses you with your time. He blesses you with your talent. He blesses you with your treasure. Even the money is a blessing from him. And he's still looking at some return on investment. So all of this is about the reminder that God will not continue to send blessings to you that he cannot send through you. So the real issue is who have you blessed in the last seven days other than you? I mean, I mean, come on now, let's be judgment day honest. Who have you blessed in the last seven days beside you? And if the truth were told, you'd have to say you ain't even blessed you. You've been so schizophrenic and hypocritical that you have not even lived up to your best self. You know you ought to be doing better than you're doing. You ain't even blessing you. So if you can't bless you, how are you going to bless somebody else? Okay, okay. Say that again, Brother Minister. I don't like the way that sounds. Okay. See, I know. I know. I, I, I know who I'm talking to. I'm, I'm talking to the members of the twice-born community of faith. And y'all want book, chapter, and verse for everything. Okay, here it is. Love your neighbor as you do what? So if you don't love yourself enough to make yourself want to do what's right, I know you ain't going to do right by me. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being excited. And I tell you, after Brother Clark sang, you, you know, you, if, you, if, you got, if, if you came in here having a bad day, you ought to, you ought to walk out better than you came, just from the singing. I don't know what you plan to do tomorrow night, but we sure praying you'll show up again tomorrow night. <laughs> Yeah, we, we need some enthusiasm. Thank you, thank you, you got us in the spirit. All right, we're working on, we're working on a construct. I'm, I'm working on a theme for this week, the sobs that saved a city. And we're looking at Matthew chapter nine and verse number 35. They're gonna put that on the screen. I, I'm going to try to give you a handout because that's the last night. 
if I give you a handout, you won't take your own notes, so you'll use mine. So I want you to, I want you to have some notes of your own, but I am going to try to share what I'm, what I'm doing with you um, in a handout. Matthew chapter 9 and verse number 35 is what we're using as a scripture text. Uh, last night, we talked about weeping as a tool of evangelism. And uh, tonight, we're going to do weeping as a tool of encouragement. And if the Lord say the same, tomorrow night we will do weeping as a tool of retention. So let me help those of you who are here for the first time. Was not, we're not able to uh, uh, view what we did online uh, last, uh, last night. We're working on a general construct. And that is church growth will only occur as evangelism, and what was the other? Encouragement and, and retention do what? Work together. Boy, I tell you, you're all a good class. You're a good class. Anytime you can give back to teacher what he teaches, you get an A. So church growth will only occur as evangelism, encouragement, and retention do what? Work together. So when we talk about evangelism, what are we talking about? Friendship evangelism. So in this workshop, when we use the word encouragement, what are we talking about? We're talking about what kind of hospitality? Radical hospitality. And when we talk about radical hospitality, Hospitality means to make people feel welcome and that they do what? That they belong. Every member in the body of Christ is important. They are important because they are a member. Now, I know that there are some members that are easier to get along with than others. We all have different gifts. We have a different talents, we have different skills, but we all have the same value. Oh my God, if the church could only learn that. I may be the minister, but I'm not more valuable than you. I may be one of the leaders, but I'm not more valuable than you as a member. I may be your favorite leader, but he is not more valuable than you. Now, I know we say that theoretically. When are we going to start acting like that? If we are not careful, the Lord can allow each one of us to get so comfortable that we are righteous now that we become self-righteous. And we think we are ready for the elevated seat of the fourth person in the Godhead. Because we always right. You know, we spend too much time trying to be right. And I, and I appreciate folk who work hard at trying to be right and try to do right and try to come up with the right decision. But just remember now, I don't care how consistently right you are, you're never going to be right all the time. Amen. And every once in a while, you have to recognize because you are a part of the body, being right can never transcend treating people right. Okay, say that again, Brother Minister. I want to write that down, but I don't know if I understand what you said. I said, B 
being right can never transcend treating people right. Okay. There are times when you are in disagreement with people and they got you all wrong. They have the situation all wrong because they have only half the facts. You can't be so bent on being right that you don't listen to their half facts. Because you gotta know where they are because a person's perception is their reality. Now that reality may be based on half facts, but you don't know the facts they got if you can't be patient enough to listen to where they're coming from. And when you find out they got half facts, somebody's got to be the bigger person in the room. Because you know what? They may be right, and you may be right too. You know, that can't happen. Two people can be right about the same thing, but they see it differently. And my relationship with you has to be more important than me being right. Because if I am right, Hear this. Because if I am right, I'm going to be right even if I act like I'm wrong. No, you see, that went right over your head. <laughs> see, this is, this, is why, this is why married folk can't stay married. Because somebody processes information better than somebody else. And the way they process information they come up with a conclusion that's 99% right all the time. But guess what? Everybody get tired of being wrong all the time. So every once in a while, if the relationship is more important than being right, I can say, you know what? You're right, and I'm wrong. It takes maturity to do that. Oh, my God. All right, you Church of Christ folk now. I got some Bible for The strong must do what? See, we just quote all these scriptures. It's the application that gets us in trouble. Every once in a while, even when I am wrong, and I'm trying to help you get the facts to be on the same page with me, and you can't get it, I still have to act like, I'm wrong, and you're right. Because you know what? If I just model for you what maturity looks like, because that's the game. That's the end game. I can be the minister. I can be the elder. I can be the deacon. I can be the ministry leader and not have to be right in every situation. In fact, I can be right and turn around and my right becomes wrong because I developed the wrong attitude. I can be right with the wrong attitude. Somebody said, I thought you said evangelism, encouragement, and retention must work together. What I just described to you is what encouragement really looks like. It's building other folk up. You think encouragement only means saying something nice to folk. To 
build people up sometimes means modeling spiritual maturity. Because what I'm doing, I'm building your faith up. Because when the devil takes a seat at the table, if you allow him to take a seat at the table, he comes with an agenda. And what is his agenda? It's to kill, it's to steal, and it's to destroy. The conflict that you and I have, the misunderstanding that you and I have, is a part of the devil's agenda. He wants to kill your faith, steal your joy, and destroy your soul. And guess what? My misunderstanding with you and my misunderstanding with you and my misunderstanding with him ain't worth me losing my soul over. Somebody got to act like Jesus in this. That's what encouragement looks like. Somebody has to model spiritual maturity that says everybody is valuable. You are so valuable I don't want you absent from my body. I ain't gonna ever get mad with my hand and wanna cut it off. <laughs> I'm not gonna ever get angry with my foot and wanna cut it off. Even when it's in pain. I'm not gonna wanna cut it off. Now it may need to be cut off, but I won't be the one to cut it off. And if we're not careful because we don't make people feel like they belong, that they are valuable, we cut people off from the body. People leave the fellowship and you have no idea why they left because they don't always tell you how they've been hurt. We have to build a culture. I said evangelism, encouragement, and retention must work together. We have to value each other. In fact, there's a, there's a scripture in the Bible that says I must think more highly of you than I do of myself. Now, when I disagree with you, that's hard to remember. When you don't treat me right, that's hard for me to remember. When you disrespect me, that's hard for me to remember. When you criticize me, that's hard for me to remember. But every time I see you, you got something negative to say about me and everybody. That's hard for me to remember. But somehow I must remember that you're more valuable than me when it comes to me treating you right. Now, let me say this. This may be the most insightful thing I'm going to say tonight. We all, whether we like it or not, there are cliques in this church. That's not just this congregation. There's Southern Hills, there's Marcellus. 28 years I worked with Berkeley Heights. There are cliques in every church. And we need to stop acting like there are not. There are certain people going to band together, hang out together. And there's nothing wrong with your clique. There's nothing wrong being a you can't, how are you going to stop people from liking each other? How are you going to stop people from wanting to hang out with each other? The click is not the sin. 
the sin is you won't expand the click. That's the sin. It's a closed click. Everybody not welcome in it. There ought to be no click in the body of Christ that every member is not welcome to be a part of. Why don't you praise God? Amen. Because there are too many people who can't belong to anything. This needs to be the place that they're going to belong. So while we can't treat everybody the same, and I know that just blew a myth that you believed all your life in the body of Christ. We've been trying to act like we we expect we can know you gotta treat everybody. We 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 all the same. No, we're not all the same. We don't treat everybody the same. Now, got Bible for that too. Jesus loved everybody. But he was closer to the twelve than he was the multitude. And then in the twelve, oh my God, there, there were there was the inner circle in the inner circle. Who, 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 who was a part of the inner circle? Peter, James, and John. And you know why they were closer to Jesus? Because they had more in common with Jesus. They were more committed to Jesus. So stop talking about we, we, treat, everybody, we treat everybody the same. No. You're not obligated to treat everybody the same because everybody is not the same. There are some folk you can't even be nice to, much less be sacrificial to. Because some folk are so much a user, if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. You can't treat everybody the same. The Lord never obligated us to treat everybody the same. What he obligated us to do is treat everybody right. Say it again. We are obligated to treat everybody right. Look at your, somebody say, just treat me right. You don't have to treat me like you treat Brother Coleman or, 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 or Sister Taylor or Sister Jones or Brother Clark or Brother Wood. Just treat me right. That's all I want from you. Just treat me right. And the way to treat me right is to treat me like you value me. Treat me like I have value. Don't treat me like I'm a piece of dirt. Don't treat me because I don't have the education you have. I don't have the knowledge you have. I don't have the money you have. Just treat me like I have value. That's all I ask you to do. Now when you do that, have you treated everybody right? If church growth is going to going to occur, we have to have a burden. That was the message last night. We have to have a burden. For the last, the least, the lost, and the left out. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. I don't just have a burden for the people outside the body that makes me weep. I got to have a burden for the uncommitted Christian. I'm talking about people 
who've been in the body for 20 or 30 years and they just as immature now as they were five years ago. And it ought to make me weep. And here's the best way to help people is you have to understand it's hard for people to be what they've never seen. Write that down. Write that down. That's free. I just gave you a point. That's free. It's hard for people to be what they've never seen. I might be in the body for 20 years, but if I've not been around anybody who knows how to resolve conflict, who knows how to deal with people who disagree with them, who know how to deal with people who feel that they are not valuable, when you talk to me, when you criticize me, when I've been raised my whole life and nobody values what I say or value me as a person, it's hard for me to take you talking to me like I'm crazy. Now put the scripture back up. Matthew chapter 9 and verse number 35. I want to dig a little deeper and deal with some pragmatic, practical things. We're going to, we're going to read this together. I'm not, I was going to have a reader, but we're going to read it together. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Verse number 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. When he saw the multitude, that's, how, that's where we start when he saw them. That, that's the lesson for tonight. So when we talk about evangelism, we are talking about friendship evangelism. You've heard this if you've been to Bible class over the last several months of my coming out here. I've talked about evangelism and I've introduced the concept. So since this is teaching that we have out online so you can come back and, and review this a time and time again, I want you to write down four things because that's what we're going to do tonight and tomorrow night. And I'm going to be a little practical with what we're going to do tonight. By definition, when we talk about friendship evangelism, we are talking about Random acts of kindness. Write this down. Before I write the four things down, I want to make sure you got the definition right because this is the concept and construct you got to have in your mind. Friendship evangelism is random acts of kindness. Random acts of kindness in the name of Jesus and the local church. I think we can say that again the same way. Friendship evangelism is random acts of what? In the name of Jesus and the local church. Did everybody get it? All right. That's a process. Somebody say process. So if it's a process, it means that there, there are several things connected to make that happen. 
It's four things. Here's the process. Number one, the opportunity to minister. The opportunity to minister. Number two, the chance to witness. So what's number one? The opportunity to do what? What's that last word? Minister. minister. It's the opportunity to minister. You have to see yourself as a minister. You are serving, you are servicing, you are ministering to people. The only minister in the congregation is not the evangelist. All of us have to become ministers. We got to learn how to minister. That's, that's why I did that introduction on how we value each other because we got to learn how to minister to each other based on where you are in your spiritual development. You might be the minister, but you may not be as mature in dealing with people as you ought to be. You may be an elder, but your people's skills may be terrible. You may be a ministry leader, but your listening skills may be atrocious. But we've got to learn how to minister to each other. I can't walk around, avoid you, walk on eggshells without holding you accountable when you're not treating me right. I'm not going to let you and my conflict with you run me off from the church. I'm not going to be mad with Brother Coleman and take it out on Jesus. Oh my God. I'm not going to let you get me so upset that I decide I ain't coming to church here no more. Because wherever you decide to go, you're going to run into somebody just like who you just got through running from. Because the devil has the same agenda in the next congregation that he has in this one. Oh, so you're going to keep on running, looking for a perfect church. And you're not going to find one. And if you were blessed to find that perfect church and you place membership, it wouldn't be perfect no more because you're a member. I told you. See, this is why I don't dye my hair. Because I can say stuff with gray hair that you can't say with black hair. The opportunity to do what? The chance to, to witness. Number three, because we're going to deal with the first two tonight. We're going to get these other two tomorrow. Number three is the invitation to teach. And number four is the responsibility to disciple. The invitation to teach, the responsibility to disciple. See, that disciple part is what we call retention. Most of our evangelism workshops center on getting folk in the front door, but we don't jam up the back door. My God, we'd have to have four worship services at the New Church of Christ if we could have kept everybody got baptized in this place. This auditorium wouldn't hold them. Friendship evangelism is random acts of kindness in the name of Jesus and the local church. And it starts with a mindset of ministry. I need to go out looking for opportunities to minister. 
And so this is what Jesus said. When he saw the multitude, he had compassion on them. It's hard to minister. Okay, come on. Come a little closer. Let, 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 let me whisper some sober words to your soul. It's hard to minister to people that you don't see. It's hard to minister to people you don't see. You look at people, but do you ever see them? Because if you see me, you don't just see me, you try to understand me. Unfortunately, we don't get enough teaching on the value of trying to understand people, but every Everybody who has value want to be heard and they want to be understood. Now, if your family is anything like my family, it's dysfunctional. You got, you got some folk in your family. that if you had to choose your family, they wouldn't be members. <laughs> but you know, we don't get a chance to choose our brothers and our sisters and our uncles and our aunts. And, oh, come on now, am, am, am I right? And unfortunately, we have as a result of the environments that we live in, we have some hurts, we develop some habits, and some hangups. And we think it's normal, because it's, you know, that's the way we talk to each other, that's the way we treated each other, that's the way we acted at our house, and that's normal, because that's what I'm used to. And you don't know how dysfunctional your family is until you go visit some other family. You know, that, that, that's why, you know, when I got ready, when I get, you know, and, and self-disclosure is good. I don't do this enough, so, you know, I, I need to do more of this. See, I grew up in a family with a father who was a functional alcoholic. That's part of why I'm a therapist. There's so much drama going on at our house. I didn't understand. And the church didn't know how to minister to folks. Because my, my dad, like all his buddies that he drank with on Friday, because they were functional like they worked on the job and they and they drank on Friday and Saturday half a Sunday so they could sober up and go to work for Monday. And I didn't understand that the drinking and the card playing and the domino playing and all of that was to anesthetize their pain. They had all been army buddies. They had gone to fight in the Korean War dodging bullets, trying to stay alive, come back to this country and can't even get a decent job. And they were wounded. And then he has a son who is 
challenged with manual labor. I can't do nothing with my hands. I can't assemble a bicycle with the instructions. <laughs> and in the 50s, you know, if you didn't know how to do things with your hand, you're going to starve to death. So my daddy thought he was helping me, trying to break my spirit to say, your black so-and-so going to die poor. Because you're going to starve to death because you're too dumb to know anything. And he thought it was helping me. But he was killing me. But thank God for a grandmother who understood encouragement. She said, don't pay your, don't pay your daddy no attention. You wired differently. God didn't put yours in your hand. He put yours up here. You, you, you use this. You can make a living with this. And as a child, I wanted to become a helper of people who are sick and don't know it. And you can't do that better than being a minister and a psychologist. <laughs> When you see me, when you see people, don't judge where they are without being willing to understand where they've been. And when he saw the multitude, when he saw Jerusalem, he didn't just see buildings and finances and ships and planes and cargo. When God looks at a city, he sees people. Now, he has nothing against towering builders and majestic sh show places in our cities. But, but the truth of the matter is God will not come back to this earth and destroy this world because of disobedient mountains. God doesn't plan to come back and destroy this world because of backsliding rivers. Hard-headed and stiff-naked oceans. He had no problem with nothing he made except people. It's people that gives God problems. And the reason people give God problems is that he made people with a volition, with a will. You get a chance to decide what you want to do with your life. And what you want to do with your life is most of the time diametrically opposite of what God destines for you. And because there's this thing going on called spiritual warfare, the devil doesn't want you to discover the destiny that God has for you. Amen. So every person who is born of a woman is born on purpose with a purpose. And your purpose is to glorify your God. That's the only reason you are on planet Earth is to glorify your God. You've heard me do this teaching before. The four pole purpose of a believer is to glorify your God. Imitate 
your savior because you don't know how to put God first. You don't know how to make God look good by putting him on display, making him look good in the most adverse circumstances. So Jesus had to teach us. So the fourfold purpose of a believer is to glorify your God Imitate your savior. Dominate your circumstances. And maximize your potential. That's God's destiny for you. The devil doesn't want you to do that. So he's going to send all of these distractors to keep you from doing it. And if you're not careful, you're going to get stuck in being stuck. But what you need is to find your purpose. So here is the lesson. Every person you meet is a place where God desires to dwell. Write that down. Write that down. Every person you meet, every person you see is a place where God desires to dwell. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Know ye not that your body is what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. You know what a temple is? It's a dwelling place. A temple is a dwelling place for God. The Bible says God's desire is for him to dwell. But put that scripture back up for me, if you don't mind. Know ye not that your body is what? The temple of what? Of the Holy Ghost. Who is the Holy Ghost? Third person in the Godhead. When you became a Christian, the first gift God gave to you as a Christian was the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moves into your body, your temple, to help you do battle with the unholy spirit. Somebody missed that. You are no match for the devil. Because the devil is a spirit being. And you can't fight the devil with flesh and blood. That's why God gave you his spirit. So that your spirit connects with his spirit. And you all together fight the devil. You got to learn how to see people the way God sees them. God sees every person as a person there, as a place where he desires to dwell. So the bomb on the street, the hell-raising cousin, the gossiping neighbor, the criticizing co-worker is a place where God desires to dwell. And you need to go into every space you go looking for opportunities to minister. Let me show you what that looks like. Random acts of kindness in the name of Jesus and the local church. So that person who works with you on your job, that's your work buddy, had a crisis this week 
that took all their money. Ain't no sense in you judging them. They've, they've, they've exhausted all their emergency money, and they don't even have enough money to eat on for the rest of the week. And they come to you and say, can you borrow, can I borrow $25 from you to Friday? Believing, I mean, the Newark Church of Christ is where believing, belonging, and what? And blessing is our passion. Somebody you work with ain't never come up in here. They don't even know you're a member of the Newark Church of Christ. They know you're a decent person. You're a kind person. Kind enough that they make themselves vulnerable to say to you, I'm so broke, I can't even get to work for the rest of the week because I need $25. Now, you don't know all the stuff that has them in that place. Because they work, they make the same money you make on your job. And you're sitting there trying to figure out, how in the world could you, what could you be doing that you don't have $25 to pay day? But here's your opportunity to the minister. Here's a random act of kindness. It's a sacrifice for you. But God has blessed you. You've got an emergency for him. $25 ain't going to break you. But $25 just gave you an opportunity to minister to somebody in the name of Jesus and the local church. And you go to the ladies' room or the men's room and get your little $25 out of wherever you have it hidden. <laughs> you don't want to be pulling your money out of your wallet and the, the components you got, you know, you don't want to do all that. So you go and you come back because see, what you have in your possession is this card. Don't you have one of those? Did, then they pass that out? Okay. This is a push card. This is what we use to push our message. Look at this card. On the front of this card, it says something about Newark Church of Christ. What time we have services. When the television program comes on. When the radio program comes on. And you turn this card over. They even got the website up there. Turn this card over and it's got members, name, telephone number, and the email. And you pull this card out of your wallet or purse or whatever you have, and you put your name on this card. John Black. You take that $25 you can give them and say, this is a blessed $25. God bless me to have it. And I don't want you to pay me back. I'm going to give it to you. Instead of paying me back, I want you to visit the Newark Church of Christ. Now tell me, what did you just do? Give me a hand. Tell me. Tell me, what did you just do with this card? Come, come, give me a hand. I'm going to bring you the mic. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me what you just did. Friendship, evangelism, and, and, uh, and building a relationship. So, so you just practice friendship evangelism. I do, this all the time. I, I do this all the time. I love these cards. I give them out all the time. All. You figured it out. Now. Raise the hand of everybody else who figured that out, that that's what these cards are for. See? See? Raise your hand high. Raise your hand high. Raise your hand high. You already figured out what these cards are for, right? Now, the rest of y'all, now you know what the cards are for. Okay? 
We operate on a budget, but our budget is not so thin that we can't keep plenty of these. You need to have 10 or 15 of these cards all the time with you. Because whenever you meet people, you have to start seeing them as random acts of kindness in the name of Jesus. See, you could have given the $25 or you could have loaned them the $25. But I guarantee you, when you give $25 to somebody who may not even need it, because I know you're sitting there, but what if they own drugs? What, what, what if they're going to use my money to gamble? At least they know when they want to get their stuff right. Oh, my God. Why don't you teach, Doc? At least they know when they want to get their stuff right that there is a place where believing, belonging, and blessing is our passion. That's friendship evangelism. Now, you know why you want to give them this card with your name on it and I'm getting ready to close for tonight? Is when they show up to worship, you said, I'm inviting you to worship. So when you come, you ask the hospitality person to find me. Why? Because I want you to sit next to me. Because I want you to feel that you have value and that you what? Belong. And if you come here as a visitor to the first and you are the guest of John Black and we treat you with the hospitality that we're supposed to and you come back again and when you come back again and finally, Brother Graves teach you and put you in the water. You're already connected. We just finished half of our retention battle. Because you already connected to somebody in the body. Because if you've been here twice, you ought to be expanding your clique. Oh my God, why don't you preach, Doc? You know y'all go out to uh, Mark Twain after church on Sunday. And now I got a visitor. I invite my visitor to go with the click to Mark Twain. And now they know four people in here. We've already got the connection ministry going on. Oh my God. This is what it looks like. Random acts of kindness in the name of Jesus and the local church. Tomorrow night we're going to talk about the witness and I'm going to tell you how to witness to that person. The best thing that ever happened to me was to be exposed to Christ and the church of Christ. That's my witness line. The best Thing that ever happened to me was to be exposed to Christ and the church of Christ. That's why I'm so blessed. This $25 gift is a blessed $25. God blessed me to be exposed to Christ and the church of Christ and I want to be a blessing to somebody else because he's blessed me. That's all we're going to do for tonight. Bow your heads. Abba Father, we just stand in awe of your goodness and your grace. We're not quite sure how you do it, but you always know what we need before we ever knew you. And I guess it has something to do with the fact that you made us and that you know us and you see us. You don't just to see where we are, you to see where we need to be. And you put people in our lives, you put people in our spaces to help.
help us glorify you, make you look good. And so our daily prayer is, oh, Father, help me to so live that those who know me and know not thee will want to know thee because they know me. Father, as we prepare to leave this place tonight, think about rearranging our schedule to be here again tomorrow night. Protect us. But above all, open up our hearts, open up our mind to see everybody the way you see people as a place where you desire to dwell. And may we leave here tonight, go to our jobs, go to wherever we go, looking for opportunities to minister to people where we have a chance to witness that the best thing that ever happened to me was to be exposed to Christ and the Church of Christ. We send up this petition on the wings of faith that it will reach its destination, heaven. For it's in Jesus' name and for his sake we do pray and give you thanks. All who receive this word and all who receive this prayer say amen. amen. Praise God. If, if you need to Say yes to the Lord if you need to make your calling and election sure and make a new commitment. Brother, Brother Claus is going to sing one verse and we're going to give you an opportunity to do that. I have wandered far away from God now. I'm coming home The path of sin Too long I've trod Lord, I'm coming home Coming Coming home, never more to roam. Oh, been white thy arms of love, Lord. I'm coming home. Let the church say amen. amen. Once again, we want to give Dr. Lane a round of applause for that <laughs> dynamic, dynamic lesson. Uh, we all should be ready willing and able to go out there and save some souls, seeking, seeking those who need to be saved, and there are plenty. We have a few Christians who have come, members who have come, uh, and have written out and will state what's on their heart. I'm going to read those that I have first, and then I want to call upon those who wish to verbalize it themselves. I'm going to start with Sister Viv Vivian Francis. She states that I went to go see Brother Verdi Williams. He was good, he was in good spirit. He said he would be transferring to the VA hospital in Lyons, New Jersey, in a day or two. Please keep him in your prayer. Also, keep my son, Deshaun, Deshaun in your prayers as well at this time. I certainly will. It's good to, good to hear about Brother Verdi Williams as well. Sister Aries, she states, please pray for my new job and my schooling, that all be well. 
and that I'll continue to focus on what I need on top of keeping myself focused on the Lord. Also being helpful to others and to take, uh, to take this journey. Please pray for me as I go through this deep journey that's set before me and that I'll get some rest and give my body the nourishment that's needed so that I can stay healthy as well. You certainly will. Sister Gwen Jones, she states that I've repented. I've sinned, I've repented of my sins. I've been speaking things that I should not be speaking. Uh, I got mad at some people, uh, a woman in the neighborhood, uh, so I'm sorry for that. My mind has been problematic and not allowing me to do the things that I, was, that I want to do. I went after a brother being upset, so I'm sorry and I repent of that as well. I also praised uh, a man and I repented of that. Just please be with me and help me, uh, pray for me that I can stay focused on the Lord. And we certainly will. Sister Tanya Jones, come forward. Good evening. Um, I just want to thank everyone for the prayers for my mom. Um, she is still in the hospital. Um, she had quite a few tests today. And so far, things are negative and the results are okay. So, prayfully, she'll be released tomorrow. But please just keep her in prayer and my dad and the rest of my family. Thank you. Brother Kevin Williams. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, I'm asking y'all to uh, pray for my wife, Corinthian. She's going through a lot of pain right now. Let's pray that uh, God will heal her pain and she will get well. And also a co-worker of mine, he's very sick right now. And we just found out that uh, he's in the hospital, just hoping that everything will be all right with him. I'm trying to get in touch with him. He's a young man that works with me for about 10 years. And I've been trying to get him to come to church. So let's pray that I could get him to come to church too. Thank you. Sister Hunt. Brothers and sisters, um, I'm requesting prayer for um, Sister Paulette. She was here doing the services, but um, she had to leave because she wasn't feeling well. Please keep her in your prayers. Thank you. I certainly keep her in your prayers. Bow with me at this time. Let's go to God in prayer. Holy and righteous Father God. We come to you at this time as humbled as we know how. For you are worthy to be praised. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to communicate to you in prayer. And we petition unto you, dear Lord, the various prayer requests that have been laid out before thee. God, that you that you'll be with us, Father God, as we deal with the various things in life. We know times are, are difficult for so many of us, dear Lord, and we pray that you will just continue to comfort us. We pray, Father God, that you will forgive those who have confessed that they have sinned, cast their sins in a sea of forgetfulness to be remembered no more, if it be thy will. We pray for those who are dealing with health issues, that you will strengthen their bodies, restore them back to a reasonable portion of health and strength, dear Lord. Allow them, Father God, to have access to their their bodies and uh, the functioning of their bodies, dear Lord, in a way that will give them peace. We pray, Father God, for uh, those who are just going, de dealing with various struggles in their lives, that's dealing with uh, sin, sinful things, dear Lord, that you will uh, get them straightened out, Father God, allow them to focus on you and only you, that they can walk in the straight and narrow. Father God, we pray for, for all of us, dear Lord, that you will uh, bless us and uh, enable us to become the Christians that we so desire to be, dear Lord. We pray, Father God, that you will uh, allow us to be focused on doing what you've instructed us to do, which is to save souls, keep souls saved, and help those who are in need, dear Lord. We pray that this lesson that was taught this evening will not have fallen on deaf ears, that we may take that word hiding in our hearts and our minds, and that we might not sin against thee, and utilize it, Father God, to do 
your will. We just thank you for Dr. Lane. Continue to bless him, dear Lord. Continue to keep him uh, well, keep him strong, keep his mind strong, that he can continue to be on the battlefield teaching and preaching in the way that he has been doing for so many years. Thank you, Father God. Be with us, Father God. For those who uh, I was, have not been able to call in their prayer request, you know who they are and you know what their requests are, dear Lord. We pray if it be thy will that you grant them these things, dear Lord. For we thank you, we love you. In Jesus' name, we lift this prayer. Let us all say, amen. amen. I want to, again, thank Dr. Lane. Uh, you have done it again on tonight. Uh, yes, yes. I'm telling you, I, we just got to go back and, and watch these services over and over and over again to consume this information. I mean, even if you took the, the best of notes, it benefits you to go back and, and watch it one more time. Uh, and we thank you, Dr. Lane. We are coming to a close of this church growth workshop. Uh, on tomorrow will be the, the last night, the last night to come and hear this great preacher uh, teach us uh, how we are to go out there and win and save souls and such a practical, practical manner he has been doing. Uh, I mean, in the way, the way he has laid it out, all of us should have a clear understanding of what we need to do and how we need to go about uh, winning souls and uh, doing the friendship evangelism. Uh, very, very practical methods. I mean, the way he took this car that we've had for so many years, and like you said, a lot of, a lot of us had no idea how we were gonna utilize, utilize this car. Uh, and these cards are in the, the foyer on both sides and have been on the foyer on both sides as you exit out. Make sure, make sure you grab these cards and have them have it already pre-filled pre out, keep it in your wallet, keep it in your pocketbook, keep it with you uh, so that we can pass, utilize these cards for what they are. As, as Dr. Lane mentioned, uh, we don't want to hold on to these cards. Make us order more and more and more and more because you're giving them out uh, to, to those. And trust me, there's enough people just within this block for us to run out of these cards and need a lot more. So let us do our part. Thank you, Dr. Lane, for, for bringing that to our attention. As mentioned, tomorrow will be the final night. Uh, we are uh, asking uh, if you are not going to be here on tomorrow, please, uh, if you are uh, able, uh, to leave your love offering for Dr. Lane. A couple of people have, uh, have given me offerings for Dr. Lane uh, because they will not be here on tomorrow night. But you can leave it with myself, Brother Jackson, Brother Peyton, uh, any one of us uh, on the leadership, you can leave it with um, the church has done his part, uh, and now it's up to, to us to do our part in showing our appreciation for what he has uh, been doing and the blessings that he has shown towards us. Again, I want to uh, thank Brother Clark uh, for, for stepping up and uh, volunteering to sing for us. Uh, he has been doing an, an amazing job uh, on, on singing, has been lifting our spirits and getting, getting the preacher man ready uh, for when he comes up and do his part. Uh, we have a couple of uh, congregations that I want to acknowledge uh, real quick. Certainly, uh, Brother Clifton Thomas, no stranger to this congregation, former, uh, min uh, former member, now minister for many years over at the Central Avenue Church of Christ. Always good to see uh, Brother Thomas in, in the house. Um, and yes, uh, along with the other play cousins from uh, Central Avenue as well. Good to have you as well. Um, and I, I'm not familiar what congregation uh, uh, you're from. Uh, Echo Lake. That's right. That's right. That's right. Echo Lake. Good to have Echo Lake in the uh, in the building as well. Um, is there any other congregations that I did not recognize that's in the? Yes. Sorry. 
Brother Cunningham, great, great minister over at the Echo Lake Church of Christ. Was here last night, as a matter of fact. Uh, any other congregations that I might be overlooking? So it's good to have all of you, all of you visiting congregations. Uh, as, as always, we, we are encouraged to have those who are, who are logging in online. Thank you for logging in and checking us out. Good to have you online. Better to have you in person because you don't get the same online that you do in-house. You can't, you can't get the, you can't feel the preaching the same way online that you, that you do in-house. You can't feel that singing the same way. Uh, but good to have you nonetheless. Uh, you, you're blessed as a result of receiving that information. Come on back out again tomorrow night. Uh, it is currently 8.45. Great timing uh, for us to be able to make it home. Uh, I pray that you everyone be safe on their travels home. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask Brother Thomas, if you don't mind. Uh, Brother Thomas, if you can uh, prepare your mind to give us a closing prayer uh, at this time. And uh, at this time, let us all be standing for our closing song and prayer. I'm a hard fighting soul and I'm on the battlefield. I'm just a hard fighting soul and I'm on the battlefield. Lord, I'm a hard fighting soul, and I'm on. I'll keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service there. Lord, I'm just a hard fighting soldier, and I'm on. Oh, Lord, I'm just a hard fighting soldier and I'm on Lord I'm just a hard fighting soldier and I'm on this battlefield I'll keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give Let us be bowing, let us be praying. Holy and eternal God, gracious and blessed Father. Father God, it has never been said better, but we just repeat the words from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Father God, just like a good physical meal, we have supped on tonight of a great and a wonderful spiritual meal. And just like a meal, Father God, when we have enjoyed it and it has been rich, it's hard for us to bring forth words. We're so thankful and so grateful for well, not only what we've heard this week, but really, most certainly, what we've heard on tonight. We have heard many, those of us who have been around, many, many sermons and many Bible studies but we're thankful for this spiritual filet mignon that we have received on tonight. This food, Father God, that not only have we feasted on tonight, but we will feast on for days on end. Thank you for blessing Brother Lane to be here and to be a part of our life as he has been for so many years, for so many people, for so many congregations all across this land and this country. But we're thankful that you have blessed them in such a way, and in such a way we have been blessed thereby. We beg your continued and your rich and your wonderful blessing, not only to be on him as the preacher for this occasion, but certainly on this congregation of your people, uh, Father God, who refused to let the light of the gospel go out. It has been here on this corner for uh, 60, 70, maybe even 80 years. But we're thankful, Father God, for those who recognize the light and the leaders and the laborers and the workers here. And Father God, who know uh, what a grand and a wonderful and a marvelous thing it is and must be. Uh, Father God, that we may keep uh, shining the light of the glorious gospel here. I beg that you will continue to bless all of us, certainly those of us that... Uh, Father God can change up our schedule and be here tomorrow in the physical uh, that this meeting may end in a wonderful and magnificent way. 
Even, Father God, if it just happens to be that we can only make it online, well, I believe, Father God, it would be, it would do our souls well to get what you are going to pour forth from this, your great servant. So bless us one and all as we continue to strive to make heaven our home. We just beg right now, Father God, that you would give safe passage uh, to each and every one of us to our places of abode. Uh, we do know, Father God, if we ever lay our head on a diet, on a pillar on tonight, it will be because of your grace and your mercy. Uh, so if you would give us your grace and your mercy and bless us, Father God, as we run along the way, praying that not only will we get safe passage, but we'll have a good night of rest. And because there's some of us that have to go in tomorrow and give the man uh, some moments of our time. But we're looking forward, Father God, to the time on tomorrow uh, when the bell will ring, when we're able to sign out and when we're able to push the world to the side uh, for just a moment or two and to come running to uh, this place, uh, Father God, where we can share and those things that pertain to life and godliness. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you for all your many, your wonderful blessings. Pray this prayer in the blessed name and the holy name, the righteous name, the glorious name, the gracious and the eternal name of Christ Jesus, the eternal one. Uh, let those who love the Lord say in Jesus' name, amen.